so I want to talk a little bit about your photographs and the photography. So one of the one of the great things about Mark's books is that in addition to getting uh, great writing, you also, in most of the books, get some pretty stunning photographs to go along with it, and they're all taken by Mark. Um, so um, what is the process that you use for selecting the photos that get included, and um, is it difficult to convince publishers to let you um, include them in the books? Well, I, I started um, doing the photos actually just as a way to, well, I, I should say, first of all, I really try to describe um, San Francisco and the other uh, places I set scenes very faithfully. So when I was writing the first book, I would go and I would take notes, and then I, I said, well, you know, I better take some photos too, just so I can, when I get back to my office to start writing, I'll be able to refer to the photos and use them to describe what I'm seeing. So I started taking the photos just as a way to um, to, um, to to have to jog my memory, to do a better job of describing San Francisco. And then in the first book, I was out looking at different neighborhoods, and I had pretty much written the first draft of the book, but there was this scene in, uh, I think it was South of Market that I really liked. So I took a photo of that. And then I said, well, I'm gonna change the book so I can somehow fit this photo. <laughs> so then the photos started influencing, uh, you know, the plot as well. And, um, you know, the first publisher was a small press in Berkeley called Poltroon Press. And uh, the first book, if you find a first edition, I think they have one in the library, if you find a first edition of it, it's actually modeled after the first edition of The Big Sleep. So Alistair Johnson is the, one of the partners at uh, Poultry Press that published it. He made a, did a great job of sort of modeling it after the, you know, this 1940s edition of uh, The Big Sleep. And he was also kind of enthusiastic about the idea of, of including the photos. There's a couple of editions of um, the Maltese, well, there's one of the Maltese Falcon that's illustrated with photographs from uh, 1920 San Francisco, done by Aryan Press. And there's another one uh, by Aryan Press where they did the, the, uh, the Big Sleep and they hired actors uh, in period costumes to go around LA and kind of set all the scenes. So those were out by the time um, the book came out and I was partially inspired by that as well to kind of include photos. And so I think, you know, not to, not to toot my horn too much, but I think the, the, the photos in this book are probably the best of them in any of the books, just because over time I've gotten better uh, as a photographer. Um, and uh, in this, uh, this publisher let me do full page bleeds of the photos so they take up a full page. And I, you know, I, I, I finally realized well, you better just do portrait photos for every photo so they don't come off, you know, like uh, panoramic photos don't work very well in, in, a, in a book. So all of them are portraits so that we get you know, the maximum space dedicated to the photo. I, I have a little sort of funny story about photography and writing. I, I was in a writer's group for a long time and I was with another guy who was a, a very good writer and he's since published uh, a couple of books and um, he's also written screenplays that have been optioned. And again, I'd say he's a better writer than me. We, we went to dinner, my first book had come out and I had done this photograph of uh, what I was sort of portraying as a rear's desk. So there's a typewriter, kind of like that typewriter, there's a lamp, there's a gun, there's you know, all the bourbon in the glass. And uh, I used that as a promotional, I uh, used it as a promotional poster for the book. So we, we had dinner, we'd been drinking a little bit, and I said, hey, I want to give you one of the posters for the book. He said, oh, that'd be great. So we got to my car, opened the trunk, I pulled the poster, and I showed it to him. He goes, oh, wow, that's way better than your writing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and he'd been in my writing group, so he knew what my writing was like. But I guess the point being that, uh, the, the, I think I'm as good, at least as good a photographer as my writer. You know? <laughs> well, I I would say that the, the photographs of this book are, are some of my favorites of the ones that are in the book too. And, and I think my favorite in, in this book is actually the one that's 
in front of chapter um, three, which is when Reardon goes to Berkeley, and I'll just hold this up, but you know, buy your own copy and then you can see it. Um, and it's a picture of the new um, downtown Berkeley um, BART um, entrance. And I just want to read what you wrote about that and how it, kind of how it ties, the photos tie in. Um, it's just one, one sentence here. Um, I got off the train at the downtown Berkeley station and rode the escalator to a street level entrance that looked like a gigantic slinky frozen in mid slink. <laughs> and I looked back and I thought, dang, that's exactly what it looks like. So. Okay, so I have, I have one more question. I just have to say something in response to that. So, as you may or may not know, that is a relatively new station. In fact, it's quite new. And what it, when I wrote the book, that was not the, uh, the station uh, awning. And if, what, what was there to me looked like a um, caddy for uh, poker chips. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me. So I had described it as a caddy for poker chips. And then I happened to drive by there, you know, ready to take photos, and what the hell, it's gone, I didn't take the book. So, so that's how that happened. So I think it's probably a better description than what I had, but it's sort of interesting. Yeah.